Um, I'm going to show you how to transition through the octaves on a tin whistle. So when um, when I start out, uh, when I start getting up here, all the holes off around the so here's a G, and then around the A, and then that's the B. Around the A, I think uh, my finger typically comes down, and I anchor on that bottom hole so that it's I've got a stable whistle. So I've got my back thumb, this thumb, and then this. So I have a real stable contact. Uh, and then when it comes off, and plus my lips, obviously. So I'm supporting it like that, and that helps you keep the whistle stable when all the fingers come off. So. You can see my finger slowly going down. So when you hit that, um, the top, uh, the second octave D, uh, it's, it's good to learn to pop your finger off, and you never want to it's it's a bad habit to get into to like really you know pull your fingers way off uh, the hole because that takes time to get back down onto the holes for that coverage plus you can lose your place if you move your fingers around too much uh, and and sometimes like for rolls I kind of you know I'll do some more finger waggling I have more travel there but it's part of my timing But if you're just, if you're just, if your fingers are moving and they've got to go back on, you really don't have to, you know, take them all the way off the whistle and, and put them back on. Uh, that's just, you know, extra movement, extra time. Uh, and, and I've seen a really good flute player, uh, uh, Irish flute player, who just when he was playing, his fingers came up like that. You know, if he didn't need his fingers all the way off. I mean, he doesn't need them all the way off, and he would just, they'd just hover right over the holes. Uh, so you really don't need to move them that, that far. Um, so when you get to this octave transition point, you can... What I would recommend is get really comfortable with that, that spot on your whistle. So just sit here like, But just kind of just run through it and and focus on getting it nice and smooth And then after you practice that for a while, you can practice uh, your your C natural fingering. So, and I, it depends on what kind of whistle you have. Some some whistles, they can do. This whistle uh, likes to have more fingers down. One, let me see. Some whistles you can do this fingering. Uh, and then some whistles just that fingering or that fingering. Uh, that obviously doesn't work for this one, but so there's a variety of different fingerings, or you can half hole. So. Most uh, the most common one I see in, in the little in um, in soprano whistles is is this fingering, so where you have basically three holes in a row down and then the anchor hole right there, which 
makes it easier to transition for me. Um, second most common I see is, is this one, the two finger hole. Um, but again, it just depends on what kind of whistle you have. But But just run through that uh, over and over and over again until it's really, really comfortable because that's that was one of the most difficult places, especially when when you're doing this or practice, you know. something like that. play something that that really uses that and just get familiar with it uh, because you'll, you'll use that a lot it's right there in the middle of the of the whistle and going from you know all fingers off it takes your fingers a while to get used to coming back to the same spot each time but just keep at it and uh, and eventually it'll just become very uh, intuitive and your fingers will know where to go uh, but but don't you know don't do stuff like this because then your fingers have to come back you just want you know just pop them up slightly because uh, and then you can also do this or you don't pop your finger up uh, or you don't vent it's called venting the top hole um, and in some whistles, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, some whistles, it does. Some whistles, it means you have to blow significantly harder to get a clean second octave D. Uh, and on some a lot of flutes that I've played, uh, you've had to. It, it makes it very difficult to get that that second octave D to sound cleanly. So I, again, I would recommend uh, learning this by default: the vented top uh, or second octave D. And, and also on some whistles, it, it makes a it makes a tone quality difference. So this one, not as much, uh, but again, default I would learn the vented uh, second octave D, and then uh, in specific situations, maybe later uh, you might intentionally like maybe really fast passages or something. There may be a reason why you'd want to uh, not use that, um, but. Uh, or you might want to just keep it closed, uh, but again, that's that's whistle. It's kind of whistle dependent. So, anyway, I hope that is helpful. Um, yeah, that's just a really tricky spot on the on the whistle. So, good luck. <laughs>